What does it take to begin a relationship with God? Maybe become a better person so that God will accept you. Devote yourself to unselfish religious deeds. You may be surprised that none of these things work, but God has made it clear in the Bible how we can know him. Here are some principles that will explain how you can personally begin a relationship with God right now through Jesus Christ. Principle one, God loves you and offers a wonderful plan for your life. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John chapter 3 verse 16. God's plan. Christ said, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. John chapter 10 verse 10. That it might be full and meaningful. Why is it that most people are not experiencing the abundant life? Because principle two, all of us sin and our sin has separated us from God. We are sinful. In Romans chapter three, verse 23, it says, for everyone has sinned and falls short of the glory of God. We were created to have fellowship with God, but because of our stubborn self-will, we choose to go our own independent way and fellowship with God was broken. This self-will characterized by an attitude of active rebellion or passive indifference is evidence of what the Bible calls sin. We are separated, for in Romans chapter 6 verse 23 it states, for the wages of sin is death, spiritual separation from God. God is holy and people are sinful. A great gulf separates us. We are continually trying to reach God and the abundant life for our own efforts, such as a good life, philosophy or religion, but inevitably we fail. Principle three explains the only way to bridge this gulf. Jesus Christ is God's only provision for our sin. Through him, we can know and experience God's love and plan for our life. He died in our place, it says in Romans chapter five, verse eight. But God demonstrates his love, his own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He rose from the dead. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse three to six states that Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. He appeared to Peter, then the 12. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time. He is the only way to God. In John chapter 14, verse six, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father, but through me. God bridged the gulf which separates us from him by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross in our place to pay the penalty for our sins. Principle four states, we must individually receive Jesus Christ as savior and Lord, repent of our sins, trust in him, surrender our lives to him, then we can know and experience God's love and plan for our lives. Receiving Christ involves turning from self to God through repentance and trusting Christ to come into our lives, to forgive us our sins and to make us what he wants us to be. Just to agree intellectually that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for your sins is not enough, nor is it enough to have an emotional experience. You receive Jesus Christ by faith as an act of will. Mark chapter 12 verse 30 says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. You can receive Christ right now by faith through prayer. God knows your heart and is not so concerned with eloquent words, but a willing and truthful heart, ready to commit, repent, surrender, and accept him as your Lord and savior. Will you make 
that decision today.